I'll start by thanking David for the kind invitation to come and present uh, some of, a, of the ideas that I have about uh, uh, test and trace. Um, it pits together one against the other, uh, one's right to privacy and one's right to, to good health and, and to life. And certainly both are very, very important consideration. So we need to weigh them very, very carefully. And I think Israel gives some food for thought um, as what can happen or what, what's happening when a country um, decides to go for it. Um, alas, Israel did it in, in many ways in the wrong way, and I'm going to explain why. Um, but it's a, it's a very interesting experience preceding Britain. So the structure of my lecture, um, I'm going to give you some facts, very, very slim um, body of facts about, about Israel that are relevant for today. Uh, today's discussion, I'm going to speak about the medical aspects and then technological aspects. Um, argument for track and trace, argument against uh, track and trace. I'll speak a bit about the legal aspects involved in that. Um, and then I'm going to finish up with a proposal. So specific requirements for how to do track and trace better. I'm not saying perfect, but at least in, in a more decent way. So um, Israel is a country of about 9 million people. Um, the life expectancy is similar to the Western world, is around 82, more for women, less for men, but altogether around 82. I think in England is about 81, so um, Israel and Britain in that respect uh, are quite similar. What happened was that when um, the world uh, came to realize that there's, no, there's a new corona virus uh, erupting, Israel was one of the first countries to react very, very quickly. So um, in late December, uh, the, the news came out um, in Israel and um, the government took all kinds of measures in order to uh, try to, to stifle uh, the coronavirus. I'm not going to go into detail because this is outside the remit of this discussion, but I just want you to look at the figures between December uh, 2019 and 7th of June 2020, there are about 18,000 infections and 295 died. Um, if you would follow the coronavirus world table, Israel was in a very fluttering position, uh, very low uh, in, in, in the scale of infections and, and dead people. However, um, Around that time, around uh, late May, uh, starting June, Israel started to open. And it, it, it opened quite rapidly. Um, and I would say um, it, it was too early. So look at the figures now, between 8th of June to 6th of September, there are about 130,000 uh, people were affected and more than 1,000 people died. So you can see that the, the success story of the first wave just evaporated. And uh, currently, Israel per capita is number one in the world in um, the number of infections. So that's a very sad story, a uh, success story to start uh, with a not very happy ending uh, later on. I want to say something about the medical aspects of these things and why um, countries decide uh, to go for track and trace. So from the moment of infection, um, about between two, we don't know exactly, but between two and 14 days will pass until the onset of the disease. The symptomatic, the symptomatic period of the disease is probably the most contagious. And the most the, the contagious is currently estimated to be between seven and 14 days after the infection. In order to interrupt the chain of infection, because every person, if he meets another people, is possibly potentially can infect them, we need to know who is 
ill who has the coronavirus and who are the people who came in contact with that patient uh, during, say, 10 days prior to the onset of the symptom. What do we mean by contact, having contact between two people? Well, that means that someone is within two feet apart of that patient for at least 15 minutes. The assumption is if it is less than 15 minutes, that person, the, the, the one who encountered the patient might be safe. So the, at, at present, the scientific evidence that we are looking for, it says 15 minutes to be in the company of someone who carries the virus. We also know that all the people and people who suffer from all kinds of background conditions like asthma and obesity and some others are the most vulnerable. And we also know that if we want to stop this chain of events, we need to find a fast and accurate action um, to do that. Some words about Israel. Well, Israel is a startup nation, is one of the leading nations, certainly per capita in the world, uh, investing in high tech. When the government decided, following the examples of South uh, Korea, to pursue track and trace, um, the citizens of Israel and the world at large discovered that actually track and trace has been in service of the Israeli uh, security agencies for long years. So Shabak, which is the MI5, the Israeli MI5, was using track and trace for their own purposes to fight terrorism and all kinds of threats against the state. And what the country did, what Israel did, they simply took that um, high tech that the Shabak uses and implemented it swiftly uh, to fight against the coronavirus. So if you have this technology, and Israel had it already, didn't have to develop it, uh, contact tracing technologies can assist in identifying contacts in order to curtail the spread of the disease. Uh, you, what you do is you track the cell phones of those who may have the coronavirus. And when a person is diagnosed with the virus, he or she is required to help in constructing a map of her movements in the relevant period. Now, as Philip mentioned, it can be a small, if not a large nightmare. If you're talking about, you know, very busy people, busy bee people who are moving around swiftly using trains and buses and cars and so on to go and try to reconstruct the movement of that person is not going to be easy. Uh, so that's quite a challenge for any track and trace system. What the app does is to compare the places in which the user, the patient was with the roots of verified patients, or not the user that those who, okay, cell phone who might meet the patient in order to locate possible overlap meeting points. And then they have to ask the people how long they think they, they were together. If it is less uh, than 15 minutes, then uh, they will go scot free. But if it's 15 minutes or more, then uh, what the Israeli government did is to issue letters from the health ministry, ordering them to be self isolated. So if without knowledge, without knowing you were in the company of a patient more than 15 minutes, and the track and trace um, discovered it, you receive a letter from the Ministry of Health saying that on that day you were in the company of a patient and therefore now you're ordered to stay at home for 14 days. Now that can be quite harsh on many people because you know there are other plans. Um, so it's not easy to enforce this thing. In order to enforce this thing, the Ministry of Health followed this up by making phone calls to the homes and the person who has to be at home has to answer the phone. Not the wife, not the child. We are looking for Joseph. You have to come to the phone. And sometimes in addition to that, the police would come and uh, pay them a visit. So they will knock on the door or they shout from downstairs or they ring the bell and said, we want to see you, Joseph, uh, just to make sure that you are at home. This is quite intrusive way to deal uh, with the coronavirus. Moreover, since the emergency measures were taking place back in March, 
the police was also authorized to use mobile phone location in order to ensure that those who had been ordered to stay in quarantine were indeed staying in quarantine. Of course, the way to bypass this thing is simply to leave the phone at home. I know that many people are attached to their phones, but in order to escape this kind of stuff, the police investigations or whatever, all you have to do is to leave your phone at home and you can go anywhere you want and then the police are not going to follow you if this is what you are demand to do. A month after the trekking was authorized, um, the Israeli parliament, the, the Knesset, a uh, special committee that investigated this thing, which is the Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee, decided to halt the police mobile phone location tracking, arguing that this was too intrusive, too invasive of uh, people's privacy um, and uh, um, should not be continued. Now I want to very quickly to summarize what are the arguments for track and trace and what are the arguments against track and trace. Let me start for, with arguments for. First, extreme circumstances call for extreme measures and no doubt that the coronavirus crisis is an extreme circumstances. For within this, we have uh, hundreds of thousands of people uh, died until now. So it's certainly very deadly and we need to do something about it. There is a need for prompt action. It might save life. And of course, we all have an interest to save life of those affected or those who might be affected. Uh, patients have an interest not to infect others, especially their loved ones. Um, the charm of it is that it's supposed to be a quick fix. All you have to do is to isolate the patients and the problem, the chain is going to be cut and you're going to save life. And it helps to enforce the law. So these are the arguments uh, for uh, track and trace. What are the arguments against? Sick and infected people as well as uh, contacts have privacy interests and rights regarding the data. When an individual receives a text message from the Ministry of Health, they are legally obliged to isolate themselves. But what happens if the system is wrong? If for whatever reason, uh, the system thought that you were in the company of a patient for 15 minutes, but actually you are not there, or you are less than 15 minutes. And apparently, there are many flaws in that system. It's not an accurate system. So many people felt that they were putting in what they call jail or at home uh, with not enough justification. So there was a lot of uproar, a lot of anxieties, a lot of um, um, grievances against the government for doing this in such a way. And there's no possibility for appeal. You can't appeal against the decision because you know, by the time that you appeal, 14 days are going to be over. It's, it's every bureaucracy takes time. Um, so therefore it may restrain people needlessly. It harms, of course, the job market and economy. It violates the privacy. And are you insane involving the MI5? What, what, what do you have in mind here? Involving the Shabak? This is crazy. We don't trust the government, let alone, we're not going to trust the MI5 uh, to inspect our, ourselves. We feel uncomfortable doing this. Um, and there's no such thing as a quick fix. It is in your imagination, it's not going to work. Um, as I said, people just leave their homes at home and go anywhere they wish. Um, the feeling is that you make citizens into criminals. Um, you are going to inspect them. You're going to send the police after them. Uh, you are going to track the movements. You're going to track their phones. And what happens if I leave the phone and now the police comes and, and you ask for me and I'm out of the home? So am I a criminal now? What are you going to do to me? Um, are you going to jail me? then you are going to populate already overpopulated jails. Now I can tell you that in Israel, the track and trace was in one month of operation. And I'll explain in a minute why. And in that month, one month, 203 people were arrested. So if this were to continue for a longer period of time, just imagine we have to build new jails for all these supposedly criminals. So there's a fear of slippery slope. I want to say something about the legal aspect. Granted that privacy is not an absolute right. It's a, it is a right, but it's not an absolute right. 
the state is allowed to infringe on privacy, but provided that there is appropriate certification in law. So the law is very clear about what should, should be allowed and what should not be allowed. If the harm, meaning invading privacy, is for a proper purpose, and only to the extent that it does not exceed what is required. So these are sort of legal standards that we can enforce. Israel is a democracy and there are many human rights organizations in Israel. And as you can imagine, when it was starting, immediately there was an appeal to the Supreme Court of Justice. And on the 26th of April 2000, uh, 2020, it's a mistake here, um, there was a claim and a petition that this tracking severely violates the constitutional right to privacy. And the Supreme Court judges concluded the choice to make use of the state's preventive security agency to follow those who do not seek to harm the state without their consent raises an extremely serious difficulty. A suitable alternative should be sought that fulfills the principles of privacy protection. That was the argument of the Supreme Court, so that was stopped. I want to go straight to the proposal. So what will be the requirements for track and trace? So balancing these two rights, the right to privacy and the right to life, and the right to, to good health, what can be done? What is a compromise can be found? So here is what I suggest. First of all, if you're going to use such a technology, it has to be civilian technology and not security technology in order to locate those who have been in close contact with patients. It has to run by civilian agency and not by security agency. So I propose Ministry of Health. More crucially, it has to be based on voluntary use, meaning if people are opposed to that, then they can be opting out uh, with citizen informed consent and free will. Now the government we know is not going to accept this, but I think this is crucial, uh, not enforce people to do that against their will. It has to be transparent. So when the government issue information about track and trace, it has to be clear, it has to be unambiguous, it has to explain uh, what's the purpose of the collection of data, the types of data that are going to be collected, how data is going to be stored, how data is going to be shared, and how long data shall be retained. All of that has to be known to the public. Every effort should be made to test the technologies prior to the widespread use to ensure they function well, are technically robust, and have no security flaws. I'm not sure this is the case in Britain nowadays. We have to respect, uh, respect people's privacy. We have to use technology only for the purpose of saving life. We have to protect people's data and we should not retain personal data beyond necessary. We should limit surveillance to the minimum necessary to overcome the crisis because otherwise we are going to say all our suspicions about the state just have been confirmed. Um, this uh, issue was abused by, by the government for its own partisan uh, purposes. And of course, data should not be for profit because we can expect that if there's going to be some sort of a snowballing effect and it, data is going to come, the first that are going to abuse this, they're going to be um, commercial agencies. Um, time limitation only during COVID-19 and then stop immediately. Um, and the government should take any effort, every effort to prevent abuse. Do not let data stream others um, to other parties. I mentioned commercial uh, firms and prohibition on collection of accesses of information. There could be an obligation of purposefulness according to which the information collected will not be used for any other purpose other than locating the contacts and duty of information security to ensure high security, including encryption of any personal data or health data collected and of any devices, applications, servers, networks, or services involved in collection, transmission, processing, and storage of information. There should be independent oversight, including of ethical and human 
uh, rights aspects of both the public agencies and the businesses that develop, operate digital proximity tracking application or use information obtained with them. Preferably oversight conducted by independent oversight body, not by government body. There should be clear legal sanctions against those who violate the above guidelines. Thank you very much. Thank you.